So this is the first webinar offered in our division that is focused on the BC Jobs Plan, and therefore we're keenly interested in your feedback during and to follow this webinar about future Jobs Plan related topics and interests. So I'd like to introduce our, our presenters today. Um, Greg Goodwin is Executive Director for the Regional Economic Policy and Projects Branch of the Ministry of Jobs, Tourism and Innovation. Amy Schneider is Strategic Initiatives and Analysis Director for the Regional Economic Policy and Projects Branch. And Tanya Twinster is Director, Citizens Engagement, BC Jobs Plan and Government Together BC, Government Communications and Public Engagement. Our, uh, our agenda is here for as follows. So Greg will be beginning just uh, um, looking at how looking specifically at the Canada Start here, the BC Jobs Plan Six Months Report. Amy Schneider will be looking at the Regional Economic Investment Attraction Pilots, and Tanya Twinster will be speaking to the new development on the BC Jobs Plan Citizen Engagement website. So with that introduction, I'd like to turn things over to Greg Good. Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar this afternoon. BC Jobs Plan Canada starts here. It's a key government priority. It will build on the province's uh, solid foundation of prudent fiscal management to attract investment and encourage exports and open up new markets to BC products. This very brief 10-minute uh, presentation will provide an overview of the ministry, the, the uh, jobs plan, as well as the results in progress over the last uh, six months. Next slide. The ministry's mandate is basically, as you see it here, open markets to BC products, attract new investment, and through various initiatives and offices overseas and in the regions, uh, the ministry works to basically reduce and eliminate barriers to exports and investment, increase awareness of British Columbia's competitive, competitive uh, business climate, and attract international investment through our foreign offices. The three pillars of the BC Jobs Plan, working with employers and communities domestically to en enable job creation across British Columbia and ensure that communities are investment ready for uh, the investment that will come to British Columbia, strengthening the infrastructure in order to get goods and services to market, and expanding the markets for British Columbia products, particularly uh, in, in Asia. Okay. This slide is a, is a key one. If you concentrate on the orange and goldenrod uh, parts of the slide, you can see the enormous uh, sign and significant increase in spending power of both uh, China and, and India in particular. And these are uh, one of the key reasons why the British, British Columbia and Canada in particular are looking for Asia uh, to open up markets. And so uh, initiatives such as the forest uh, industries inroads into China over the last number of years, building the relationships that have encouraged and allow the forest industry to penetrate the Chinese market. Using that approach uh, will be a key to other sectors that British Columbia has a competitive uh, advantage. So some key things that the ministry and, and the government have done over the past uh, while are really looking internationally and looking at new markets, looking at the markets that I've just described, particularly China, India, Korea, and um, and uh, Japan. And last year, the Premier led a, the, the most significant international delegation in British Columbia's history, 350 delegates, 150 companies, organizations, and community groups going to uh, China and India. And as a result of that, they signed 60 business deals and partnership agreements across a number of sectors. And uh, more recently, the Premier went, went to uh, Japan, South Korea, and the Philippines to reinforce our trade and cultural ties to those uh, countries. And at that, uh, through that delegation, uh, the 25 business deals were signed, totaling uh, a greater value of uh, over half a billion dollars. Through the uh, BC Jobs Plan, also government has uh, doubled its international trade presence to ensure that the penetration to international markets is, uh, is there. And BC currently has nine trade and investment representatives around the world. Competitiveness and innovation, ensuring that the right tax environment and the right regulatory environment is appropriate for the competitive nature of the global economy. A number of tax measures were included in Budget 2012 that will encourage further investment in the province and increased skills of British Columbia's labor force. For example, 
Uh, budget 2012 increased the Small Business Venture Capital Program by $3 million, which uh, provides tax credits of 30% for direct investments in eligible new corporations up to an annual limit of $60,000. And just as an example of the regionality of this um, tax credit program, $4.1 million uh, was invested in Prince George's Blue Key Energy uh, Incorporated, a company that processes craft pulp mills waste products and to be chemically converted into biofuel, biodiesel, and sterile. So that's a, a key example of this of the tax credit working in uh, in the regions. Other initiatives include a refundable tax credit of 20% uh, up to $5,250 to help. Uh, apprenticeships in the shipbuilding industry, and the apprenticeship training tax credit um, has been extended through 2014, which includes about $31 million in annual funding. In terms of regulatory reform, the province the government continues its efforts to reduce regulations, uh, regulatory burden on uh, on business, and since 2001, the province reduced regulatory requirements by more than 42%. The Small Business Roundtable and Aboriginal Small Business Roundtable continue to provide advice to the government to ensure that uh, the key um, uh, employment generators that are small business continue to uh, are, have the business environment to enable them to create the jobs into the future. The key sectors driving economic growth and what uh, the jobs plan really does is build on uh, British Columbia's competitive advantage and through, through the development of the jobs plan, uh, I talked about some overarching changes being made to promote greater investment and create a, a, a better uh, investment climate and business climate for investment to occur and job creation to occur. But within that, you know, there are eight key sectors that the province wanted to uh, focus in on where we have a competitive advantage with three overarching sectors, natural resources, which includes forestry, mining, natural gas, and agri-foods, knowledge-based, which includes technology, clean tech, green economy, and tourism, and infrastructure, including in international education, and then, of course, transportation, ports, marines, and aerospace. And the next slide really outlines uh, which each of the eight uh, strategies, each sector, there is going to be a strategy developed, or there has been a strategy developed, and those that remain will continue to roll out uh, over time. Each of the key sectors government uh, will be focusing in on and the key ministries that are responsible for developing the sector strategy will be also responsible for implementing those strategies as well. All this material can be found on the Jobs Plan website, which you'll hear more about in a little while. In terms of uh, job creation, some key initiatives that the Jobs Plan uh, provides for are regional workforce tables where Regions, region-specific skills and economic development initiatives are identified. Uh, consultations happen with industry, labor, employers, First Nations, educators, training service providers to ensure that the training programs and education programs are tailored to meet the needs of particular regions in, in the province. And thus far, there have been two workforce uh, tables and others planned in the Northeast and the Northwest. Labor market and training programs, the jobs plan wanted to ensure that the uh, significant funding that goes annually towards labor market and training programs over a half a billion dollars annually is targeted to meet regional and industry labor market needs. Investing in the industry training authority, over $100 million has gone into the industrial training authority, so they are responsible for making sure that there's a dedicated workforce and a skilled workforce for industry and career development opportunities throughout the, the, the province. The Immigration Task Force recently concluded its work and made recommendations to government, and this really is key to ensure that immigrants will play a, a role in filling roughly a third of the forecasted $1 million job openings over the next 10 years. So their recommendations are key to the future, and their task force released a report on, on its findings on May 22nd. There are 10 recommendations uh, that, uh, that have been made. And again, overall, making sure job creation is the focus of government, so the jobs plan is a key priority of, of the ministry and of government. And this is really a pervasive uh, plan and it's a strategy that all ministries have embraced. And in addition to that, there are two agencies that are quasi-separate from government, the BC Jobs and Investment Board, who are going to be providing regular reports that focus on investment opportunities and 
identifying issues and processes that may be impeding that investment, benchmark VC's success relative to other jurisdictions, and hold government to account in terms of uh, the success of the jobs plan over time. And the Aboriginal Business Investment Council is another agency, and they're across uh, membership on both of those um, initiatives so that there's common objectives that uh, can, be, uh, can be accomplished. The regional economic investment pilots you'll hear about uh, in, uh, in the next presentation, so I won't go into any detail there, other than to say that there is, these are key initiatives of the jobs plan and that they are key initiatives to engage communities and uh, employers and businesses in the region. So recently, the six-month report uh, was tabled, was provided to uh, the public, and in the original jobs plan, there were targets that were set. For example, eight new mines in operation by 2015, uh, at least one LNG pipeline and terminal online by 2015, and three operating by 2020, create investment attraction strategies for each uh, region, and increase the number of international ed uh, education students uh, in BC by 50% over the next uh, four years. And in terms of the progress towards some of those goals, four mines have been con have begun construction, received approvals or extended operations. The pilots, as you will hear, have been established in, in three communities. The Jobs and Investment Board and the Aboriginal Business Investment Council have been established. The Major Investments Office has been established, and they have uh, identified 10 key initiatives that they will be working on over time, and over 30 agreements, now 50 agreements actually, through the uh, two recent missions that the uh, Premier led uh, overseas. Some early signs of success. Uh, in 2011, the share of exports destined for Pacific Rim eclipsed close to the United States for the first time in the province's history, and this is key because of the United States economy is still not recovered, and our uh, historical dependence on the United States um, has done us well in the past, but we need to make sure that the province keys in on Asia and other markets. So in total last year, BC's exports grew by 14% to over $32 billion. And just as an example of the growth uh, to, in Asia, the province's softwood lumber ex exports to China jumped 60% in 2011, surpassing the $1 billion mark for the first time. In terms of tourism, overseas visitor numbers have uh, risen by 3.3%, which is a good, a good thing. However, visits from China were up over 15%, and thus uh, fueling some of the growth in tourism from, from Asia. The unemployment rate in British Columbia is much lower than it was last year at this time, and uh, certainly below the national average as well. Some key success stories um, that you'll want to follow in the future, C-SPAN Marine Corporation, there's been much made of this $8 billion contract to build non-combat vessels for the Canadian Coast Guard, which will provide long-standing jobs both directly and indirectly for roughly 4,000 British Columbians. As another example, Mercedes-Benz, uh, British Columbia's fuel cell sector, which has been long in uh, development, and the Mercedes-Benz has decided, chosen to locate an international fuel cell stack production facility in Burnaby and this uh, facility is expected to open later on this year. In February, Encana Corporation announced it had entered an agreement with Mitsubishi Corporation that will see the Japanese Global Integrated Business Enterprise invest approximately $3, million, $3 billion sorry, for a 40% in interest in the Cutback, Cutbank Ridge Partnership, which is the uh, natural gas lands in Northeast. And again, I mentioned that we have uh, nine trade investment representatives around uh, the world, and their job is really to ensure that British Columbia is well represented uh, internationally and, and in Asia in particular, and that they uh, foster and create the environment for investment to come to British Columbia. So appreciate your time. Thanks very much, and we'll open it up now for, uh, for questions. And if there are other topics that you would like to see uh, related to the jobs plan, we'd like to hear more about them at this time. Thank you. Thanks very much, Greg. And so as Greg did mention, uh, we do have a bit of time here for four questions, Vinny. So you have the option of, uh, of either using that Q&A button uh, in the toolbar at the top of your screen and enter your question there. Or you can also use that feedback button, uh, again, top right-hand corner of your screen, um, the header there, and just uh, change that to question, and the, the, the questions will queue up there, and we can take them off. So 
but we do just have a little bit of time, so I'll just give you just a few more seconds for the opportunity there. Otherwise, we may just uh, um, jump into our, our next uh, our next presentation. No, we do have a question. Okay, um, we do have this, this question here. Um, why is there so much focus on immigrants when there are so many unemployed British Columbians that want to work? I think the forecast is a million job openings over the next 10 or 15 years. Uh, immigration fueled uh, the economy of Canada and British Columbia over the last, for the historical period of, of, um, of, uh, of our history. So it's important to ensure that we have uh, an environment where immigrants are welcomed and uh, they can provide the skill sets that are perhaps uh, necessary for jobs that are that are currently going unfilled. Recognize that there are gaps in certain areas where where people are unemployed and jobs are waiting, and much of what uh, the regional workforce tables and some of the other schools and, and labor development programs are intended to do is really to provide that match between the opportunity and the individual and the skill sets. So uh, in the meantime, there still is a need for uh, for British Columbia to ensure that there is an enabling environment for immigrants and a welcoming environment for immigrants to come here because the projections are that notwithstanding um, all of the people who are currently uh, looking for work, that there still will be about a million job openings over the next uh, over the next 10 years. So we need to make sure that there is a uh, a welcoming environment for immigrants to uh, to come to British Columbia. Thanks, Greg. And we've got one more question and, and time for just one more question here. So, Arlene, you're queued up. I'm just going to unmute the lines right now and allow you to ask your question. The conference is no longer in lecture mode. Hi, Arlene. Are you there? Uh, hi. I, I wasn't sure I typed in the question. Oh, oh, I do see but, there. But I can ask a question. Um, the 50% increase in international students, um, do you, what does that translate into that like sort of total numbers, actual numbers? And secondly, um, uh, we work with the tourism industry, and so we're very interested in, um, in tapping into these people to work part-time while they're studying in BC. So is there, facilitate them getting a work permit along with their study permit? The numbers, I'll have to check. It seems to me there's about 100,000 international students uh, at the moment, so this is a fairly ambitious goal, uh, but I will get the number, hopefully before the end of the webinar, we can either post it or we can state what it is. Now, okay. in, terms of, in terms of your other, um, other question, immigration is largely a federal matter, and so the province works closely with the federal government to ensure that programs like the nominee program have available spaces for immigrants to come uh, to Canada, and we've done a lot of work with, uh, with the federal government in terms of the uh, temporary work permits and that type of thing. Again, it's a federal matter, and we've worked hard to make sure that the community is well represented at that level to ensure that this objective can be met through uh, uh, by eliminating as much or, or processing as possible, streamlining as possible. Uh, we we would be concerned because there are cutbacks in, in Citizen Immigration Canada where they're cutting back and consolidating offices in in, uh, in Alberta. So so that would be you know important thing to keep keep that pressure on them. Okay, here you Great, thanks very much for the question there. Thanks, Greg. Um, so I'm going to go put in lecture mode and you know, a little bit of feedback there. So I would actually ask these to do us. To mute your line, unless you can, that'll help us when we do unmute the line. Again, that's star six. The conference is in lecture mode. Yeah, back on lecture mode there. And uh, okay, next, we'll be hearing um, from Amy. And Amy, actually, if you don't mind, just moving a, a little closer, perhaps taking Greg's spot there. It's grown a little brighter and uh, a little harder to see people now on the camera. Go ahead, Amy. Okay. Thanks, Darby. Thanks for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to see such a long list of attendees uh, this afternoon and, and from such a broad range of uh, from, from places. Welcome, everyone. So as Darby mentioned, um, my name is Amy Schneider, and I work in the Economic Development Division of the Ministry of Jobs, Tourism, and Innovation. And today I'm going to move from the uh, discussion that Greg started around the 
a high-level overview of the BC Jobs Plan and progress made thus far, and I'm going to provide some specifics about um, a key engagement initiative under the plan, um, which is titled the Regional Economic Investment Pilot. So what I'd like to cover today is, first of all, I'd like to um, give you an overview of the Regional Economic Investment Pilot, um, which provides a good example of how citizens have been engaged in moving forward one of the key objectives of the, of the jobs plan. And I'll talk about how that engagement has been structured thus far. I'll let you know about some of the outcomes that have been achieved as a result of the engagement process. And lastly, I'm going to talk about some of the learnings that we've acquired along the way, both with respect to the pilot approach as a method of achieving economic development objectives for selected regions, and more specifically, uh, with respect to engaging regional stakeholders in doing so. So hopefully I'll be able to provide some tips for folks on the line um, if they're engaged in similar initiatives. And I've got a few discussion questions at the end, and I'd, I'd love to get um, people's thoughts and, and ideas at that point. So, so Greg provided the, the jobs plan context, so I won't go into too much detail here, but I do just want to draw the linkage between what we're doing on the regional investment, um, economic investment pilots, and the BC jobs plan. Objective six of the jobs plan is where, where the mandate for the work on the pilots comes from. Um, as you can see on the slide, objective six talks about working with businesses and communities, creating regional investment attraction strategies, and building capacity related to responding to investment inquiries. And through the work on these pilots, we're initiating or piloting um, work to achieve these objectives in selected regions and, and learning so that they can be applied into, into further regions in the future. There have been three um, pilot areas selected thus far, and work is underway in, in, in each of those um, regions. We also... Um, have started work on a First Nation um, pilot, but uh, but the region has not been announced thus far. The three regions that are underway um, substantially are the North Fraser, and so that includes the communities of Pitt Meadow, Mission, and Maple Ridge, the Barrier to McBride Corridor. So uh, for those of you um, who know your BC geography really well, you'll know that those are the communities of McBride and Vale Mount and Clearwater barrier, um, as well as some unincorporated areas, Blue River, Avola, um, and, and a few others. Um, the selection of pilot regions is intended to provide a range of experience by ensuring diversity uh, with respect to geographic location, population size, um, economic opportunities within the region, as well as um, challenges that the regions were facing. And as I said, the intent is, is to be able to take the experiences from those pilot regions and apply them more broadly to future, um, future parts of the province uh, going forward. So we're using an intensified approach to, um, to do this economic development work in the, in the regional pilots. Um, and what that looks like um, is um, is identifying regional economic development priorities where the provincial government has a clear role. So the priorities or projects are initially identified at local economic forums held in the pilot areas, and these happened um, in the three regions I've mentioned in December and January, of December of um, 2011, January 2012. Um, and, uh, and were attended by stakeholders uh, from a, a, a range of, um, of, uh, of places, um, community representatives, local gov government representatives, elected officials, First Nations, academia. Um, we tried to get a, a broad range of representation, so we had all of the um, voices at, at the table. Following the forums, communities um, and provincial staff worked together in a partnership to select uh, a, a small number of priority projects or components of larger projects that can move forward over a six to 18 month um, period. And then the project teams um, from across government and, and with those community representatives work together to advance community projects. We have elements of citizen engagement woven into each component of the approach, both all from the initial economic forums to project selection and then out on progress. Um, we've tried um, as much as we can to achieve a transparent progress re, um, around engagement and follow-up. Um, and while, you know, looking at the slide, that the approach looks fairly clear and consistent, upon application, we've certainly found um, some very interesting variations as a result of 
different regional interests, needs, and priorities. So just to give you a sense of what um, the initial um, engagement looked like in each of these um, pilot regions, I do have a clip of the economic forum that took place in Bailmount. And um, Darby, if you could show that clip now, that'd be great. I'm just going to quickly share that video with you here and just reposition a couple of things. Playing here in a second. Now we've chosen the McRae down to Barrier Reef, so the North Thompson and Robson Valleys as one of the pilot projects for our job strategy. The reason why we chose this region is lots of small communities, big geographic area, First Nations that are progressive that want to move forward with economic development, and people that have great ideas already. So the question is, how can we support the local community to put those projects together in a meaningful way, deliver them on the ground? and show people results in a very short period of time. I am optimistic, I'm so pleased that such a large part of the provincial government has come down. And it speaks to me about their commitment to making change in communities like ours and making smart change. They're not saying they're gonna dump a lot of money into small communities in order to make small communities happy. They're, they're gonna do, they're gonna do the, uh, the, the things that they can do as government to allow us to go forward. We're very blessed in this part of the world to have timber, to have minerals, to have water and to have a, a place that uh, is accessible. And uh, I think by combining the efforts uh, of people that are willing to work together, it makes it especially a uh, uh, good place to work on pilot projects. We're looking at how do we attract investment to this part of the province. And so the government has some great tools and some experts on staff that can help support these, uh, these uh, communities. The government wants to help. They want to back the projects that we have that will provide economic stability and, and growth to the region. We've got some great outdoor recreational opportunities. There's also some unique uh, other possibilities around energy production, for instance. Uh, there's uh, opportunities around forestry, opportunities around uh, value-added manufacturing. These are the things we're exploring here together. Yeah, the ability to work and live and raise the family in these areas is, is really great. Uh, it's not compressed like the city. It gives you a chance to spend a lot of family time. So I think just from a family point of view, these uh, places are very attractive. We just think that the area is beautiful for, for raising children, and we hope that by building up the economy with a project like this, um, more young families will come to the area and, uh, and discover the beauty and the, the, the richness of the people and the outdoors. Back to Amy's slides, and you'll be able to pr proceed. Great, thanks, Darby. Um, so, following the forums um, and project selection, we've moved into the implementation phase, and the implementation will take approximately, uh, well, depending on, on the forums took place, about 12 or 12 to 18 months. Um, provincial coordination is key to advancing the projects in each of the regions, and project teams um, uh, are comprised of, of government staff from, from across government, from a variety of ministries, as well as community and business leaders. Um, to ensure coordination on the pilot project, we're seeking to continually inform and engage both internal and external stakeholders. And we also have a, a project evaluation underway to ensure that best, best practices and lessons learned are captured for future, future regional economic development initiatives. So as I mentioned, the process that was developed was intended to provide consistencies, but there really has been significant variation on the ground as we've moved into implementation, largely based on regional interests, needs, and priorities. And just to give you a sense of what that variation looks like, in the North Fraser region, a number of large projects came forward, and the team is working through these large projects to determine what components of them um, will be most beneficial and feasible to advance within the time frame that I've mentioned. A couple of, of examples of projects that are under development um, in the North Fraser region is development within the Mission Interpretive Forest and a business in innovation technology center of excellence um, in Maple Ridge. 
in the McBride to Barrier Corridor, um, a few large strategic initiatives were identified um, related to power, related to fiber, and related to destination tourism. And these are kind of um, seen as key requirements or drivers of economic development in the corridor. So that's where the, the focus of the project team um, for, for that region has been. Um, in Campbell River, there have been some really interesting natural resource-related projects that have been identified, one related to exploring uh, the mining potential of the region, and another looking at um, the available biomass and timber. Um, both initiatives aim, at, aim to bolster existing information um, and attract investments um, to the region by, by providing more detailed information about um, what types of opportunities are, are available and accessible in the Campbell River area. So in terms of outcomes, well, longer-term outcomes are yet to be seen in the pilot regions because this is because the project really is still in, in fairly early stages. There are there have been some key outcomes to date. Um, community support is one of them. Um, stakeholders, um, as you could see from from the video that we just showed, stakeholders are excited to have the province come to town. And, you know, quite literally, the the province did come to town. They were hopeful about about what that meant for the region and what could be achieved through the focused attention um, being placed um, on their communities. Um, there were regional opportunities identified. So engaging with the broad range of stakeholders that I mentioned at the economic forum um, allowed for identification of a, of a broad range of, of regional opportunities, more than we expected, in fact. Um, and these opportunities were at all stages of development, so that, that was really great. Now, on the, on the other side of, um, of the excitement about government coming into, into the pilot communities, there are also some very high expectations about what would be achieved. Um, and, you know, expectations are good. Um, we, we've worked hard to manage those expectations moving forward. Um, and we have made some significant, significant process, progress. In, um, in meeting those expectations. Um, there's been ex intensive work between community stakeholders and provincial representatives to define key requirements on individual projects and to identify clearly what the obstacles and barriers are to advancing some of those projects. Um, work is underway to move priority projects forward in all of the regions, as I mentioned. Um, in the corridor, uh, an example of success relates to the Robson Valley um, power issues which um, uh, for which there was a task force formed um, and and recommendations made um, about six months ago and and what the project team was able to do on that initiative which focused on power stability and availability um, in the in the McBride to Valemount portion of the um, of the corridor um, region that we're talking about is raise the profile of those recommendations um, and, and really put them at the forefront of, of BC Hydro's um, list of priorities. And at a follow-up session in Blue River last month, BC Hydro committed uh, $50 million towards building a transmission line, the Robson Valley transmission line, um, <clears throat> um, pending support from, from a group of independent power producers um, to come up with, um, with the, the other portion of the funding required to make that line happen. In the North Fraser, community tourism plans are being consolidated um, in support of the identified priority project um, of creating um, the, the North Fraser region as a, as a tourism corridor and attracting more tourism to that area. And then lots of work is going on in, in terms of investment attraction and opportunity marketing efforts. Um, and this is across all regions um, where, where we're trying to increase the profile and support for projects and proponents in the region um, where financing is required. And, um, and we also have a few um, announcements forthcoming. Um, so there's, there's lots more progress that will be, be announced um, shortly. Um, the last, uh, the last bullet on my on my slide there is that uh, there's lots of interest in progress up to. So there's there's a high level. One of the outcomes that, that we've we've recognized is a high level of interest in knowing what's happening and what progress has been made. Um, People who attended the forums and who have been on our website have certainly, um, you know, been paying attention to what's what's going up there, and so that has been that it has been great to have that attention. But um, it's also in keeping us honest in terms of meeting the commitments that that we've um, that we've made. 
in terms of some hints or tips or, or learnings that we've achieved thus far, um, the first one is around planning and groundwork. Um, and so in, in any other kind of broad stakeholder engagement initiative around regional economic de development, I, I think our advice would be uh, as much as possible, do all of your background checking and get familiar with the issues, know the history, and wherever possible, make connections to the relevant contacts as soon as possible. Uh, communications, communicate early and communicate often. Um, and sometimes this is, this is challenging in the government environment, but we found that stakeholders and communities simply wanted to know what was happening. They weren't looking for the big announcements. They weren't looking uh, for, for uh, really big outcomes. They just wanted to know that, that work was underway. So I would encourage a nimble and flexible communications approach uh, wherever possible. Cast a wide net. So um, by that I mean um, be open to the range of options that, that may come forward. And this doesn't just pertain to economic development um, initiatives. Of course, this is other engagement exercises as well. I think um, like we were, um, if you were to engage in, in a, a broad engagement initiative like this one, you'll be amazed at the interesting and creative things that come forward once the invitation for input has been made. Um, and uh, an indication of true engagement, I would say, is being open to, to all of the information that, that comes your way. And then continue the engagement. So um, as I mentioned, you know, people were really keen and eager to participate in the process, the process that we initiated through the uh, economic forums. And my suggestion is to harness that excitement wherever possible and provide opportunities for continued engagement to shape the work moving forward and to ensure that the community needs are being met accurately. Uh, the community that you build through your community processes, and I think that Tanya will talk about this in more detail, represents an amazing resource for achieving results. So I've got a few discussion questions, and I think that Darby will, will moderate um, the discussion for us here. Um, so I'll start off with, um, you know, have any of you on the line used, used engagement initiatives to identify community priorities? Yeah, so if I could just ask you to either <clears throat> enter answers to, to this or, or, or other questions, um, just in the Q&A Q &A above, or again, you are welcome to use that feedback button and uh, pose your, essentially raise your virtual hand in there and we'll get to you. I, I see we do have a question here from Brian. Um, and that question is, on your list of stakeholders, did you include actual unemployed British Columbians in the process? Isn't the unemployed British Columbian the ultimate stakeholder? Um, we, as I said, we had a broad range of stakeholders on our list. Um, to be quite honest, um, the employment status was not one of the, um, one of the um, components that that we knew about all of the folks um, in the room. Um, we this was a partnership with the with the communities, so we had um, representatives from a broad range of groups, including um, academia, where, as um, Greg mentioned, you know, they're um, the the uh, they would be familiar with some of the skills gaps and labor shortages um, within within those particular regions. Um, we had we had individuals from a variety of, of sectors as well. Thanks, Amy. Are there any any other questions there? We, um, perhaps I'll just give a, a, just a few more seconds there, just if there are any other questions, and uh, we do want to make sure we've got time for for Tanya as well here, and, and open things up for a broader discussion afterwards. I recognize lots of uh, lots of names on the invitation list, so uh, good to see. I can't see you, but you can see me. Um, I wanted to quickly introduce here with me um, as part of uh, part of the team responsible for the digital side. I'll call it of the BC Jobs Fund. So the website and the conversation that's happening on the website are two of my staff, and so or not my staff, my team. Sorry, um, I was looking at both, and I wanted to uh, introduce both of them to you because they may. Um, in fact, uh, be able to answer some of the questions I can't. So first, um, Brooke Finnegan, and I'm not sure if the camera will go to Brooke. I think you have to speak. <laughs> Hi there. 
story out. And uh, and the other person is Bowen Asoko. Hi, how's it going? Nice to see you guys. I'm going to wave until it moves. You may not move. I'm just a voice. <laughs> Uh, and part of the reason I wanted them to come uh, to join this conversation is um, they have been uh, in early days, Brooke, and more recently, Bowen, have been very involved in the um, in moderating the site and being part of the discussion happening on the site, the conversation happening on the site. So I just wanted um, you to actually be able to see their faces uh, if you have been on the site and, uh, and know that they're out there and, and uh, having the conversation and uh, in hearing from citizens about what they think about different topics related to the jobs plan. So, but um, do you have my web tour? Can you take it on that? All right, so I'll just, uh, in the meantime, just chat a little bit. Um, uh, uh, with the slides, I wanted to actually pull up the site, uh, pull up the website, and give you a little bit. Uh, if you haven't been there already, I wanted to be able to do that. I can go up to the site and share the share the desk, my desktop with them. Okay. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about um, about the site itself, and then give you a little bit of a tour because things have changed uh, quite dramatically. If you haven't been there recently, I wanted to show you some areas um, uh, where we're looking to get more content, where we're really interested in uh, in in communities and people who are out there talking to us. So I wanted to uh, do you mind if I thank you. So I just wanted to, um, to to give you a little bit of a tour. Um, this, for those of you who have been on the site, it may look a little bit different. This is um, new as of just um, a couple of days ago, and we're still doing some tweaks. But one of the things we had actually heard quite a lot from citizens out there, and we have met with different stakeholder groups who have talked to us about what um, – what they wanted the site to do, how they wanted more information about their jobs plan. They wanted to be able to get um, pieces of the jobs plan. They wanted to be able to understand uh, the components. And so I'll just give you a little bit of a tour here. Um, you can see, um, as Greg talked about, the, the pillar of enabling job creation. You can start to see what that what job creation is, some of the actions that are taking a taking place, some of the results, as Greg talked about. But you can also start to see some of the impacts to real people on what the jobs plan is, is about. And it's not necessarily, um, because I know this has been a bit of an issue um, from some people who think it's, you know, government is taking credit for these people, but what we really want to do is be able to showcase people, showcase how the jobs plan could impact them or how it impacts them. They may have taken programs, uh, government programs. Um, so I'll just give you an example of Mila, who's sort of my favorite story here. Uh, Mila is a, a, a metal, fabricator. metal fabricator who um, was a graduate of a program called WIT, Women's in, Women in Trades. And she works here at the Victoria Shipyard, and she has a really amazing story about how she's excited about the C-SPAN contract and what it means to her and what it means to the people that she works with. But also, it's a lot about, you know, the skilled workforce and building a skilled workforce, and she has different opinions on that. So within this site, you can start to see people like Mila and, uh, and how they relate and interact with the BC Jobs Plan. And then part of that is also about giving people – ideas and giving them suggestions and giving them resources for if they want to do that, how they can then do that as well. And so that's a part, um, a part of the site that's a little bit different is starting to focus on um, real citizens and real people out there who um, who are doing really amazing things and being able to show, uh, shine the spotlight and and, uh, and put the light on them so that others can learn from, from what they did. So you can see here also, this is for each pillar, so getting goods to market, you start to see stories about um, different jobs that actually apply to getting goods to market. Um, and that's sort of, uh, sort of a big piece or a big difference between, um, between the site and the part that we really want to grow. And I'll talk a little bit about that because you all could potentially have a role, uh, a role for us. So you can see here um, we have, uh, have some instructional videos in terms of getting goods to market. You can see an events calendar. So different events that are happening around the province related to jobs or the economy, uh, you can start to see posted here. And you can post them yourself, submit an event. So if you have something out there that you want to highlight or you want to tell people about, I think this event was actually posted there. 
You can see our Facebook uh, and our Twitter feed. That is something similar to um, similar to what we had before. But you can also start to see, I think this is kind of a, a neat feature, is you can start to see some of the infographics and information and data that are related to the jobs plan you can see uh, posted here. So you start to get some more information about the jobs plan and what it means uh, in terms of uh, facts in the economy. You can also uh, read about the jobs plan in several different places, uh, but you can download the plan here. Um, you can learn about the economy, and this is the piece I think we have a really neat um, ability to start to actually put more and more content about regions and also about the that you and Greg are doing, but you can start to see information about each of the economic development regions, um, and then you can click on and you can start to get details about the Northeast, the people, the workforce, the economy, um, and you can actually, that was one of the comments that we heard back from people, is they wanted a greater, um, their content to be deeper than it, than it was previously. Um, you will also see here the industry sector. So Greg talks about those industry sectors, agri-foods, natural gas, international ed. And you can start to see, for example, if you click on mining and you click on more info, here you can start to get more information about mining. So here's the mining sector report. There's actually a discussion happening about mining right now that's currently open on our site that I'll talk about in just a little bit. And then you can start to see um, stories, as I talked about earlier on, stories about people who are um, involved in the mining community and how they connect, that connects with the BC Jobs Plan. So there's a real opportunity, this is early days still, but an opportunity to get a deeper level of content out um, that relates to each of you. So one of the things we've heard is people want information about their regions, they want it about their communities, they want information about the sectors they're working in, or perhaps they're, they own a small business and they want to know where they should take their small business, what community they should take it to, and so they want more and deeper uh, information about that. You can also read the plan. Uh, that was one of the things that was a little bit challenging before, but you can read the plan and start to navigate through that plan um, I'm here, but the main thing I think that I wanted to I wanted to show you uh, there are two pieces here. One is share your ideas, and this has been uh, some of the messaging in and around the jobs plan. Obviously, with the face-to-face -face engagement, the work that Amy has done, um, but also in an online environment, it's been really important that we open up this discussion, uh, open up this discussion to the public. We believe that. Um, people have really great ideas and we want to hear from them. You will hear, have heard in the early days, especially both the Premier and, and Ministers talking about the jobs plan as all of our plan and the collective plan and we want to hear your ideas. So that has been built into the website. Um, and so you can see there's a, actually a process. So questions are posted related to sectors typically or related to topics related to the jobs plan. So right now we have three questions open. Have you studied abroad and what? Why did you go and how did you benefit from that experience? Um, a question about mining and a question about work search. And so if you want more background to those questions, so you want to understand the context or why we're added asking that question or how it relates to the jobs plan, you can click on uh, there and you can actually get information about that question. Uh, what do I need to know first before I contribute to that discussion? And then most importantly, what impact will my contribution make? So who's actually listening to me and what are we going to do with this discussion? You can see here that the Ministry of Energy and Mine staff are the ones that are um, paying attention to this discussion, and also there's other ways to engage. So we know not everybody wants to participate in an online open discussion forum, but people may have ideas about this, about uh, mineral exploration and mining, and if they feel more comfortable, there's an opportunity here to participate, uh, obviously, in the discussion forum, but also you, send, you can send information by email, you can participate on our Facebook page, and you can also for, participate um, in a conversation on Twitter. So you can see here, uh, once the question is closed, uh, there's actually a summary of the discussion, and that summary actually goes to the ministry uh, that um, has major responsibility. So here, uh, this was a this was one of the earliest. I think this was the first question posted. What ideas do you have to create jobs in your community or and or industry? And I think there was about 200 and. Uh, 
274 comments that were posted. And so you can see here, if you click on the discussion summary, you can actually start to see who participated in that conversation um, and what were the major themes that we heard about that topic and then what uh, our government's responses to those major themes. So you can start to see that broken down by questions so that share your ideas is not just a question that's posted that goes into a black hole. It's actually government is taking this very seriously, asking these questions very seriously, and uh, trying to set the context and provide feedback as to what happens. So you can see here the process is that the question is open for ideas for a period of time. It is then closed for review, and then a discussion summary is posted on that particular question. So um, if you haven't already, I, I highly encourage you to go to this section. We are always uh, uh, looking for more contribution and hoping to get more perspectives. The one on mining is a really interesting question. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't received too many uh, comments yet, so if you know someone who, uh, who could help, that would be really great. And then the final piece I just wanted to show you, how am I for time? You're doing very well. We got okay. Yes. Great. So, um, in terms of follow-up progress, some of the some of the comments that um, that Amy talked about, the things Amy talked about, is people really wanted to be able to follow the progress. This, for right now, is very uh, focused on. It's it's fairly high level, but we would like to get to um, a place where we are more specific. You can see here. Um, this is a. Um, something we're, we're experimenting with a little bit, but you can see an interactive uh, timeline that comes up. Uh, and this is related to the six-month project, uh, six-month progress report, where you can start to see the different activities of, um, that are happening around the province and once the job plan, uh, jobs plan was launched. So you can start to see that. And we'll hope to have more, uh, more and interactive data posted um, over time on, in terms of uh, progress. You can um, have a read of the six-month project report, progress report, sorry. You can also see the discussion summaries in one place, as I showed you earlier or talked about earlier. Um, but the thing that I think is really neat here is we also uh, start to have, uh, host our stories. And this, this is going to change a little bit, but um, you start to see more stories about um, the folks out there in the province for whom either the jobs plan um, makes a difference or uh, they're part of the work of the jobs plan. Um, so you can start to see um, you can start to see more and more stories, and those are all integrated throughout the content of the site as well. So we also have here one of the things we heard um, uh, sort of loud and clear is people originally didn't really understand the purpose of the site. So there's a section called about us, what happens. But you'll also start to meet more of the moderators now and, and, um, and start to, I think, um, see how the moderation process works so that it's all transparent. And then you can also, you know, see our moderation policy. But also um, for any inquiries, so again, for those people who don't want to comment in the online forum, there's other ways to contact us. And, uh, and that is all provided there. So um, we're hoping, I'm not sure, um, did I miss? Any, oh, no, I, think that was pretty I think in terms of just the the um, sorry the footer here, uh, I, I call this I call this an off ramp, and I have no idea why. But if you can see, can they see that? Can they see my tool? Okay. So if you see down here, uh, for folks who are interested in things that are. Um, you know, they write about the jobs plan, but they're curious. So they're curious about the questions around how do I find a job, uh, where are the work BC centers, what are the programs that are out there, what is this thing called Job Fest, or they're already working or they're businesses and they have information that they want around um, about recruitment and retention or human resources, that information. So we've tried to to help people out and lead them to a place where they can get information. If it's not about the jobs plan, other information really quickly. Um, if they um, are interested in coming to BC, because as we heard, a big piece of this is welcoming people to British Columbia, there's information here about BC, and also about um, investing, in, investing in BC. And I see Jane is on the line, so I think you'll be happy to see this section. Um, so Bowen, is there any, Bowen has been, um, intimately involved in helping uh, sort of rebuild this site and respond to what people have told us they really wanted out of this. So um, he's probably really tired right now, actually, yeah. <laughs> and thinking how great it looks. But anyhow, so can we flip back to the slides? So I just wanted to give you um, a little bit of a sense of that. Um, and we'll flip back to my slides. Okay. Yeah. How do I? Okay. 
bottom bottom area. Okay. Yep. Um, so again, it, it's um, you know um, you've heard this you know, before probably or most likely, but things like it's a living plan, we can't do this alone. We need help and help in, uh, in telling the world. Together we need to make this happen, and this is just the beginning. Um, and this website is live and open to new ideas. And we're very serious about that, and we, we will continue to grow and build both profiling, uh, profiling people around the province and being able to profile our province um, and British Columbians, but also uh, to make this more interactive, to make this more live, and to make this uh, more about us and, and all of us together um, instead of just, you know, sort of uh, um, a document. I'm going to flip through this really quickly. Um, so in terms of, of sort of the next phase of where we're going to go, we'll continue to build on the stories. And so I've just taken a, a bit of a profile of a few people here. Um, but we will continue to build stories. And so for those of you who are out there who, who may know of stories of success or, or really inspirational pieces for people to help, as I talked about, um, to help set the context and understand why we need job creation or why we need economic stability, all those kind of pieces. If you know of anyone, we're happy. Uh, we have um, some staff who will do interviews and take pictures, and we're happy to uh, to continue to build that resource li uh, resource library. And then one of the things we want to continue to do, this is really important and something we've heard a lot, is we, people want more information and deeper level of content. And so we hope here to be able to house more resources, more data. That's been a really big piece we've heard from our stakeholder groups is they'd like more data tailored to both the sectors and the regions, in particular, you know, BC staff. And, and stats can uh, provide a lot of uh, workforce information monthly, and is this a place where they can start to find that related to each sector? They want more searchable content, so they want to be able to search the jobs plan and read about the jobs plan, not necessarily go to a long 23 or 29 page document. They want to be able to submit ideas. They want a place to talk to government and give policy input. Um, and they want to get involved, but in all different ways, not necessarily always online. And so we definitely, I think, need to figure out how we integrate more, uh, more action and more activities onto this site so people can find out all of the different ways they can get involved, not just, on, not just online. And, um, so one of the things that, that we, uh, we really need, I think, is, uh, is help in getting the word out. And, um, so we've talked a little bit about, um, the fact that, uh, that it's pretty tough work letting people know around the province, you know, about the site and, and how they can contribute. And we also know that, um, that uh, the, we get fairly large numbers of people coming to our site, um, but that doesn't necessarily convert to more discussion and more conversation happening on the site. So one of our goals is really to see a lot more discussion happening on the site. And so the more people we tell, the hope is we get more discussion and more ideas and, and, um, and people's ideas are able to be uh, considered and reviewed and thought about by government. Um, what we know about outreach is it really is about it's a lot of different people. Uh, so, you know, we talk within government about the BC Jobs Plan, but we need to do more about uh, having and getting people to understand, um, getting all different groups to understand their role and actually getting them to profile and promote and, and talk to us as well. So some of the things we've thought about, um, we've thought about is how, uh, we can continue to lead and get more participation in policy discussions, whether it is face-to-face -face or online. Um, if folks have newsletters or uh, emails that go out to people, if there's any, um, you know, way you can help sort of spread the word to get involved in particular, if you get, um, in particular, if you get, um, it, there are topics related to what you're interested in. Uh, pro word of mouth, we know, is a pretty big way to, um, a uh, pretty big thing to, uh, way to get uh, the conversation going. Uh, posting events, if you have events, again, please uh, feel free to uh, to post your events on our site and then through social media. So we're always happy to retweet and modify tweet and post things on Facebook for folks and ask them to also do the same for us. So if you're using social media, be sure to follow us and uh, and we will follow you back. And so in terms of how 
uh, what we'd like to do is, is have a more collaborative and integrated website where we profile more people and stories. We use social media to do that, and, and our numbers have grown quite uh, dramatically in the last little while, but we want to continue to do that, be able to integrate all of the different activities that are happening all around the province here on the site, and be able to give folks uh, a profile and be able to provide service in deeper level of, uh, and a deeper level of content. So I think that's it. Is that timing okay? That timing is great. I think you did just have a poll question, you, or two poll questions I think you wanted to finish with. And uh, so we can pop over to those now. So I guess before today, <laughs> the question, have you been to the BC Dogs, I want to say. Oh, my goodness. Great, yeah. So for those there, you are certainly able to uh, to vote on this. Just uh, click on the colors there right on the screen in front of you, not the feedback button in the top right-hand corner, but the red and blue, yes or no. And I'll just share the results with you here. So if you could please actually just, just enter that information and actually re-enter that information there if you did it before. I'm just, uh, just trying to show the results for you here. So show the results. There we are. Okay, still a little bit of a movement there, but... Uh, Great. Well, I hope that uh, the two of you who haven't now, uh, now have an opportunity to take some time and go through it, and we're, um, you can see the place uh, to contact us. So if you have any suggestions or content or any other information, please do let us know. Okay, I'm ready for, yep. for one more poll. I can't remember what that was. <laughs> Oh, have you ever made a contribution to a discussion on the site? And I will show the results again. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Okay, well, that's great. So I encourage all of um, the others, the six of you out there, to uh, have a look at the discussions and. Uh, where it makes sense um, and you feel comfortable, please feel free to contribute or contribute in the other ways that uh, that we talked about. And I think you had one other discussion <laughs> question as <laughs> well. I guess, yeah, so I was just going to probably lead off my kind of open part of the discussion to, um, to ask, do you have any ideas for us on how to help spread the word or any tools that might be useful or any kind of content or things that you think might be helpful in in, uh, in terms of helping us spread the word about this site and getting this uh, this discussion going around the province. And and you can certainly do that by uh, entering that in the Q&A again at the top right, or if you want to do it verbally, um, just use that feedback button top right-hand corner, um, and the opportunity will queue up there. Okay. Well, if you do, um, feel free to contact us directly, and uh, and uh, if you've had a chance to think about it and uh, you want to let us know, that would be absolutely um, absolutely great. It's also an opportunity, I think, for it's a bow in here. Oh wait, yeah, well, you can't see me. For those of you who have not contributed to to a discussion, um, we also I think would uh, find why you have not uh, contributed. We'd like to know why, and if there's things that we can do, probably um, to help with that mm -hmm. as well. So if it's just that you've been to say, we'd like to hear as well from you. So if you haven't contributed to the discussion and feel like you wouldn't at this point, please let us know why and, and what we could do to, to be able to make sure that we're getting um, getting your ideas and thoughts and, and stories as well. Great. Thanks, Vaughn. There's two questions there. Are those full time? I think those are, yeah, past questions that we've had. So perhaps we could just uh, switch gears just a little bit. We did have, uh, thanks very much, Tanya. And I'm just going to come back to another poll question. Bring the slides here and uh, forward to our uh, poll graphic. I like the poll graphic. <laughs> it's really bold. It's actually it? very bold. <laughs> right here. So um, this question, perhaps a little bit more broadly. So what other job plan related topics are you interested in learning more about? And uh, in small language here. Um, so again, yeah, absolutely, please start voting on this. So sector strategies, uh, international trade and investment, labor market and training programs, immigration tasks, small business support and development, the newly established BC Jobs and Investment Board and Aboriginal Business Investment Council. And uh, if none of these fit, 
Well, you can certainly click the other, and uh, we're certainly going to provide you avenues to, uh, um, to, to comment here. There's uh, a discussion period following this poll, and I'm just going to show you the poll results there, what we're getting now. And I'm just going to jot these down as they develop. Darby, while you do that, I was just going to follow up on a question that someone had earlier about international students. You were asking how many international students are currently in BC. I just had a look in the international education strategy, and we're currently at 3.3 million international students, and we expect to be at 7.2 million by 2025. You can find that report on the website under the sector tab. I think, just to clarify, I think the number of international students in British Columbia yes. is 94,000, and 50% increase will take us to, uh, we'll need another 47,000 to meet that goal over the next four years. Yeah. yeah so yeah. for British Columbia. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks very much, Greg Amber. Okay, great. We've got that portion, uh, the poll question there, and we get the graphic one more time. So what we'd like to do now is uh, switch things over for discussion. So again, we're very keen on any uh, questions you may have, even comments. Um, the the Q&A button, top of your screen, or again, that feedback button, top right-hand corner, and, and uh, queue up right in the virtual hand. Comments or questions um, by our presenters that they would like to pose or comment on at this point? Okay, Arlene, I'm going to unmute the lines now and uh, give you a chance to ask your question there. Hi, the conference Arlene. is no longer in lecture mode. Arlene. We were um, trying to answer more than one uh, question on your last poll, but it'll only let us select one. So the, the other, so related to that, we, we were interested in. Of um, any work that you're doing to, to develop or tap into or to aid um, small business and rural businesses, the smaller and medium-sized businesses that may not have water burden and that sort of stuff. Well, I just want to speak to that, Okay, Great, good one's coming around. Can I just ask uh, other uh, attendees, if they could just mute their lines, star uh, six, and that would ensure they've cut down on the feedback and we're able to hear the questions here. So again, that's star six. Greg? The approach the uh, government is taking towards small businesses is obviously ensuring that uh, the environment for small business to create jobs and, and expand uh, is there, so low taxation, low regulatory burden, um, and there are uh, supports through the Small Business Roundtable, providing advice to uh, the provincial government on how to ensure, uh, you know, the environment is, is there for small business to continue to create the jobs and be with the engine of, of growth in, uh, in the community. Uh, the Rural BC website has a number of uh, um, services for rural communities that you can uh, go to, and that's ruralbc.gov.bc. It's the, uh, it's the website. So there's no specific incentives for small businesses. Uh, the government is wanting to make sure that the tax and regulatory part is there for all businesses to be able to um, uh, stop and expand and get into the export market as it sees, uh, as we see. Internationally, we're trying to ensure that the markets are continuing to be open in Asia and other other business wants to get into the export market, that those opportunities are there. Thanks very much, Greg. And again, it's an open call for comments or uh, or questions. Uh, hi, can you hear me? It's Arlene again. Yeah, hi, Arlene. 
So, yes, yeah, sorry, the, that last audio was quite choppy, but I think I got the gist of, of what you were saying. Um, so thank you for that. But just as a, as a, as a FYI, the, it, the audio seemed to have a problem there. Um, I have another um, question. We uh, really like what you're doing with Work BC and the BC Job Plan site and the Welcome BC and Learn, Study, Live BC, all of those sites, really great work. Um, we would, I know that there's a lot of industry groups as well as community, not just community, but industry groups that would like to be more um, working more with you because there's a lot of initiatives that are going on by in the various sectors like in ours and construction and mining and so on that are tackling labor market issues. So we would really like to, and we've made some, uh, we've had some contacts with your group, but but we think that's a really, if you could, you know, increase your uh, working with sectors so that we're all aligned on our initiatives and perhaps even leveraging uh, what each other's doing between government and industry would be great. Yeah, definitely. I um, this, I mean, just from the, even the web perspective, not necessarily from a program perspective, but from the web yeah. perspective, we, we for sure would like to... Um, to be able to do that, and you know, we've had a little bit, I think, of contact with the go to. Is that is that your group, Arlene? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for sure, um, on on the tourism side, um, I think that would be really great. So, I mean, you know, sort of even uh, beyond stories, I think getting kind of the story of the tourism sector would be really, um, really amazing to be able to do that and, and agree for the other sectors as well. Sometimes it's a challenge for us to know who, like, there's all different groups, so which, you know, who can help us. So if you can help us navigate, that's also, that's also very helpful. We could do that, and, and we've said this many times, is that we're all in this together. So instead of sort of setting up sectors to compete with each other, you know, like we've done creative things with the construction sector and so on, and, and so that we're all working together for better, um, for all sectors in, in the province are, are firing on all cylinders. So a lot of work together and not instead of pitting one against the other, or, you know, this sector is better than that one and so on, that, that there's just a lot that can be done, particularly in areas like career awareness and marketing BC to come and live and work and play to, you know, throughout the rest of the country and actually things like that. One of the other things is on the small business sort of rural side of things, there isn't, it isn't always government, but I know, I think Brody is on the line, and you guys do a lot of work, you know, in the north with um, rural communities and helping people with small businesses. So it isn't necessarily always about government being the direct line, but there, if we can be able to help people connect, I don't know, Brody, if you want to jump in, but to be able to connect people to groups like that who actually do some of that, that would that's kind of where we would like to go as well. Yep, great. I don't know if Brody, are you there? I think Dean's on the or line. Dean. Dean yeah. They might have stepped away. <laughs> Is he with small business? Uh, who's he with? He's but, with the Northern Development. Sorry. But the Economic Development, okay. Well, the Northern Development Initiative Trust that was established back in 2005 with funding from through BC Rail and then funding from the government to provide economic development uh, support throughout uh, that particular region. Uh, so they're funded to the degree of $185 million. There's the Southern Interior Development Initiative Trust, $50 million, and the Island Coast Economic Trust, another $50 million. So they've been working on economic development. They all have taken a different, slightly different approach. The Carthern Trust has some small business programs as well. And I should have mentioned as well, Small Business BC out of uh, Vancouver provides services throughout the province to uh, to existing and prospective small business uh, owners. Yeah, and we, we get asked a lot, and we, we, you know, the apprenticeship training tax credit for both the apprentice and the employer is a really good thing. We get asked from small business uh, if there are other incentives or programs to them to invest more in training or assistance or whatever. So any any sort of infrastructure issues. We know, as I say, the apprenticeship ta tax credit is really good, but there's any other to, to help them sort of see the, help them with the, the, the small business investment and training? There, there are the, um, well, Community Futures is throughout the province, and they provide directly small business loans and, and information and training. They are primarily federally funded, but they are a support there for communities uh, as well. 
I think Vicky, who was on the line, is from there, or what was on the line, was scheduled to be on the line. Anyway. The futures, yeah. Great. Thanks very much, Charlene, for your, your comments and questions there. And, and we still do have uh, a bit of time here. If there are others that uh, wish to have <laughs> uh, comments. I'll just give another, uh, another 15 seconds there, so we'll perhaps a, a last call for any comments or questions from, uh, from our participants. And how about our presenters? Any, uh, any last few comments? Okay, thanks very thanks much, everyone. everyone. You would uh, just like to point your attention towards a few resources. We do have, um, so there is the ProPress report, um, and if you have there, we've got a sort of and uh, the Regional Economic Investment Pilots as well, um, and also the contact information for our uh, individual presentations.